All right, an online group claiming it hacked the Washington, D.C. Police Department is demanding a ransom or else it will leak sensitive inf information about investigations and informants. According to the New York Times, some information has already been released, such as lists of arrests and persons of interest. The organization behind the alleged attack says it has more than 250 gigabytes of data from the department. A police spokesperson says that they are aware of, quote, unauthorized access to its server, adding that they've engaged the FBI on the matter. So for more on this, I want to bring in CBSN tech reporter Dan Patterson. So, Dan, what have we learned about this hack and, and why does it appear that this police department was targeted? Hi, Anne-Marie. So uh, DCPD was targeted by this group. Um, uh, Baduk, uh, which is a relatively new hacking group. They popped up in January and then in February with this kind of novel strain of ransomware. Uh, DCPD appears to be the third police department targeted by this group, but they've also hit um, a medical testing firm, a heating company, and even the Houston Rockets basketball team. According to the site ThreatPost, which tracks uh, data breaches and cyber attacks, uh, at least one firm has paid the $85,000 ransom. So we're kind of learning a little bit more about this hack uh, day by day, but this appears to be a financially motivated group uh, targeting uh, low-hanging fruit. You know, if I've learned anything from you, uh, I've learned that these sort of attacks usually require some level of um, technological sophistication, but then also there's usually like a lo-fi way that they manage to gain access. Um, how was this ransomware group able to gain access to this information, and are their tactics significant? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there, Anne-Marie. So we're le still learning details about how DCPD was specifically targeted. It may take some time to learn uh, the particulars. But what we do know is that phishing is on the rise, especially during the pandemic. Uh, this is when you receive an email or a text message with a link that seems legit. When you click, uh, it steals your username and password. So. Uh, Look, this is, like you said, um, uh, kind of a sophisticated hack, or at least launching a custom strain of ransomware requires some uh, coordination and planning. But phishing is a, a really simple and effective method of infiltrating targets. Um, so, you know, this is just the latest example of a cybersecurity threat against a U U.S. government entity or an American company. Um, typically, you know, we see call, uh, sort of the, the culprits are often Japan, oh, sorry, not Japan, sorry, Russia, China, sometimes Iran. Um, looking at the big picture, just how concerning is this and what's, what's the end game? Yeah, this is pretty concerning, Emory. So with or without nation state activity, and there's no evidence that indicates nation states are behind this, but like you said, Russia, China, mm. Iran, North Korea, all of these countries have the motivation and capability to launch attacks like this, but so do run-of-the-mill cybercrime groups uh, and even uh, lone wolf or, or hacktivist organizations because, like you said a moment ago, uh, although this takes some planning and sophistication, it's not really that hard to launch ransomware attacks. Uh, and because the, the damage can be so severe, we've seen cities and states uh, targeted and taken down by attacks like this. Even uh, small and medium-sized businesses, large enterprise companies have had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to get their systems back online. There's no guarantee that uh, the, the hackers are going to return your data to you or give you a, a decryption key. So this is a real big problem, and it kind of shows the scale of vulnerability across systems and networks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hearing now the D.C. Police Department isn't the only police department that was targeted. But as soon as I heard that, you can't help but to think about the January 6th insurrection, all the investigations connected to that. The fact that a lot of the organizing of that insurrection, uh, you know, it was done online. It was done in these sort of social media platforms. So I suppose when you pull all that stuff together, it's not surprising that um, the D.C. Police Department would be a target. And not surprising to me, hopefully not surprising to them. So I'm wondering, like, what sort of infrastructure is in place to protect them from future attacks? Yeah, so, Anne-Marie, we don't have evidence that this is linked to the Capitol insurrection, but 
Uh, if I were a cybercrime or a hacker or, or even a nation state hacker, I would look at this massive volume of data that came from the Capitol insurrection and see, ah, OK, there's a ton of vulnerabil vulnerability here, which means there is a ton of opportunity. If you are willing to strike uh, governments, uh, hospitals, small and medium sized businesses, uh, this is a really good time, especially when we're all working remote, we're all using Zoom. Oftentimes, even uh, those who are the most security cautious uh, can make mistakes that are exploited by uh, bad actors. So we do need upgrades to uh, all sorts of digital infrastructure. However, when it comes to places like uh, your state and local government or hospitals, even police departments, it's really hard to take critical systems offline, even for a short amount of time, to do the needed upgrades. And and that doesn't even address the, the lack of funds that a lot of these places have. So uh, once again, although there's no evidence tying this hack to the Capitol insurrection, this is a great uh, example of the vulnerabilities that exist in systems across the world. Yeah, totally. And so we don't know how long uh, this group has been trying to gain access, but we have learned from you and others, Dan, that, uh, you know, often the, there are thousands of attacks that go on sort of all day long, and every once in a while, one slips through, and that's all that it takes. Um, Dan, thank you so much. Great to see you.